The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Zachary, what's going on, buddy? Not much, man. What's happening? Not much, my friend. Uh, uh, did you... Uh... Not that, it, not that I actually want to comment on this real quick, but just real quick, did you watch the uh, Democratic debate yesterday? Of course I did. Uh, okay. And good Lord, all they do is let three people talk. This is what my candidate, Tulsi Gabbard, keeps complaining about. How rigged the system is. Hmm. You bring 12 people on that stage, and you get three people... 95% of the time to talk. Who were the three people? I, I, I didn't watch. I was at work. So I, I couldn't uh, comment on it, so I was at work. So who were the three people? The, the usual? The, the, front, the front runners of them, Anthony? Yeah, Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders. Hmm. And oh. the only time they let another, another candidate speak was if they felt they were going to trash talk one of the top three. Uh, they wouldn't ask for any of the other nine candidates their opinion on just about any situation facing America. Didn't Andrew, didn't Andrew Yang make a splash last night too, though? Oh, yes. When he was given his 75 seconds to speak here and there. <laughs> I uh, swear he is the only guy who is looking 20 years into the future for America. Everyone else is concerned about what happens tomorrow. They don't care about what happens to your kid's future. They don't even care if you have kids in the near future. All they care about is tomorrow for you. Well, that's like a, a political process is, a, is, a, is just as screwed up as ever. As ever. Um, before we get to the picks, I want to get your thoughts on the uh, Le- LeBron James NBA China fiasco. You know, it's funny. I was I was t- t- talking to my friend Mark the other day. who's on this podcast quite often, and I was telling him literally three hours before LeBron made his comments that, you know, the smartest thing that's happened so far with this situation with you know with Ch- China and the NBA and Daryl Morey is that LeBron has kept his mouth shut. Well, apparently three hours. I guess LeBron heard our conversation, told us to hold his beer, and he went off and started sp- you know saying speaking his piece, if you will. And uh, obviously the the blowback's been pretty bad. Um, I've been pretty pretty uh, vocal on social media about it. Uh, you were very pissed off about it. Uh, you, you sent me an angry text on Monday about it. In fact, it was yeah, I don't even <laughs> want to talk to you about some of your tweets I've seen. That, that I said, well, or I, that you've uh, commented on other people's posts on Twitter or your reaction to their Twitter statements. What was on my statement? But okay, okay, go ahead. But, go ahead one go ahead. of them, all right. Go ahead. Do you want me to? One of them was about, oh, white America didn't care about China until LeBron says something. I'm sorry. I, I didn't say that. Jack, that, was, that was, no, I, I didn't say that. That was, that was somebody else's tweet. I never said that. Yeah. That jackass must have missed the last 20 years where we've been trying to have made in America as far as our products go. Mm-hmm. Must have missed how. Every single middle class American complains about outsourcing here in America. Right. I mean, the goal for someone to say, oh, white America hasn't cared about China until a black athlete. No. What they have a problem with is a black athlete who goes on and wants to declare that the NBA is the equivalent of slavery today with the owners. Yet is completely against someone voicing their opinion about the freedom of individuals on the other side of the world. Here in America, every single American should be up on the side of people in Hong Kong right now, wanting them to gain as much freedom and as much democracy in their land as possible. And to hear some dumb piece of shit, because that's what he's acting like right now, mm-hmm. who is only compared... Com- complaining because it it might affect his wallet and oh my god they asked him a hard question do you know how mean it was for me to have to go hang out in that luxury hotel and have to ask a be asked a question that 
I don't want to answer. Oh my god, it's so unfair. Would you been better I off? Would, would you been better off saying no comment? Absolutely. That's when not, that's you not come out, when you come out and actually state that I don't know the situation, but you know what? This guy's uneducated with what's going on over there. Um, how do you know he's not? He doesn't know what's going on. You just admit that you're uneducated. I, I was, I was, was actually more bothered. Say, I was actually more bothered the fact that he threw Demore under the bus. What he did. Yeah, I, I felt so offended by that. The part I didn't like was Maury taking back the statement because mm-hmm. clearly the NBA and his owner got to him quite quickly about his statement because they didn't know how much it was going to impact their money yeah, Fertitta, because they are, they are cowards to China. If Fertitta got to I, I don't know, there's no question Fertitta got, because remember Fertitta put up a statement after Maury did, you know, this is an independent statement by him, and this is the reflective views of, of whatever, you know, obviously Fertitta got to him pretty early, the Rockets owner, of course. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it, it's very complicated because, you know, people are going to say, people are saying, well, the U.S. does business in China also too, you know, and people, people give me while saying, you know, well, why don't you ever speak up because the U.S. government dealing with China? I'm like, who, who, what, what would you think I never, who thought, what made you think I didn't support, I support that shit either? You know what I mean? I, yeah. personally, I don't, I, 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 I had my way, I'd rather not be, do business, any business with China, to be honest with you. Oh, absolutely. Across the board. Absolutely. If you don't allow freedom, we shouldn't be doing business in your country. I and that goes with the Middle East as well. Mm-hmm. But for some jackass wearing a Lakers uniform to to pretend like no one understands what's going on over there, and if he could have just been quiet for the week we were in town because it was so unfair to us to have to answer a question, blow me. This dumbass doesn't care about his stance when it comes to police violence, how it, how there might be a black, a backlash by white fans. The only, towards the NBA. The only thing I think I'm bothered, and I'm not even supposed to defending LeBron necessarily here, is there's people on the other side. And by the way, you're, for the record, people listen to this podcast, you're as liberal as you get, as, as it gets. <laughs> you're pretty liberal. So, I mean, yeah, so, so it's I not, am, it's not, it's I not, am <laughs> pro freedom. I yeah. am pro you have, being allowed to do whatever you want in yeah, your life. Absolutely. Be happy. Yeah. Um, the only thing that bothers me is that you have these. Folks on the right side, on, on the other side, on the political aisle, who honestly don't, in my opinion, don't really give a shit about China as a whole. That they're using this as a gotcha moment. Gotcha. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. And it's annoying as shit. Like Ted Cruz, for example, posted something, you know, see something, you know, Le- LeBron never actually said he, you know, he worshipped the, you know, the the president of China and all that. He never said that. Don't, 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 don't mince words here. Don't, don't do that, you know. You can disagree with LeBron and not be the fucking jackass either. Yes, but here was the problem with this statement that LeBron put out. Mm -hmm. He put out a statement basically kissing the ass of of the Chinese government by saying, oh, this guy doesn't stand for us. He doesn't represent us. He doesn't know what he's talking about. There's only one fact we need to understand here in America. Those protesters in Hong Kong, they're protesting for freedom, you dipshit. Yeah, exactly. Um... I was going to say also too, the one point I will say that, and maybe if LeBron had been LeBron had been a little more um, forthcoming about this, and it, it's something it's something I, I didn't think about initially, but I think when certain people in the media had mentioned it, it made a little more sense. When LeBron met, met, when LeBron said about waiting a week to say for more to say this, I don't think I, I we didn't, at the time I didn't think about this, but. By Dow Morey's doing this with having guys and Americans and players down in China on China soil, it could have gotten a situation could have gotten even worse. Where like maybe the, if the government decides to, to want to hold guys hostage, or whatever, whatever it may be, you know. I, I think yeah, the point was no, him, right, that's the only thing I, not I mean, at all. You don't think you don't think that's, that's still uh, no that that is the cur- that is the I'm a sensitive little snowflake. I don't want to answer a question that I don't want to speak about. And you know what? 
this guy speaking about it but might potentially cost me tens of millions, if not hundreds of no, millions. Understandable, but right. but also you have people there who who are not LeBron James, who are people who may trainers work for the team, but who make way less money than LeBron, obviously, that could have been impacted by this, who don't even have a say in the situation that could have been, you know, disrupted because of this situation. Had Maury waited until a week after to say this when the players are back on American soil. Again, it's tip for tap at this point, but it was a good point. Well, that, that same thought can go with when he wants to speak out about I can't breathe. You, do you sure there isn't going to be an upset officer who decides to turn his back when there's a fight in the stands? Yeah. You're putting, when you make a, make a statement, like he said, you can put people in danger. Well, guess what? When you make the same statement, you could do the same. You were only upset by it. When I say that, you, I mean LeBron. Right. LeBron was only upset by it because he had his vacation disrupted. Because that's all it was, was a vacation to China. Right. Well, like I said, I, I, <laughs> I'm sure the NBA can Look, the NBA, I'm sure, cannot wait for the season to get here. And this is that. Um, and, and the worst part, too, about LeBron saying this is that the story was was already getting on the news cycle. LeBron commenting on it made it worse. <laughs> Brought it back. Oh, no absolutely. One, so sometimes you know, and, and I tweet this also too. And we'll, get, we'll get to the picks in a second. There's a reason God gave you two ears, one mouth. <laughs> Listen. Don't stop talking. You know, don't say anything. Say no comment. And move on. Absolutely. Wait, so anyway, let's get to the picks now. Um, do you want to present the picks today, uh, Zach? The, the games for us. Maybe it's yeah, little, I can do that. Maybe you can change the luck this week finally. You know, because I because again I won again. <laughs> I won again. Yeah, how did I do on Kansas City this week? We both lost. Cause we, 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 the over under is 50, I I took the over fifty five. You said you copied me, which you did. Yeah. The number hit. You thought the final score was fifty five points. <laughs> Oh, that was the one I was thinking about with the with. No, the, we lost there. We, we we didn't go over, so we lost. Yeah, but if it if it goes to fifty five and it was fifty five, that's a push. Is it really though? Because if I said over fifty five, yeah, that's kind of like a minus seven, and you win by seven. It's a push. I, I guess the over part is what I'm, I'm more I'm more emphasizing. You know what I'm saying? Over yeah. fifty five. Not yeah. over, it's at or not under, you know. The same. Well, that'd be like if it was under 55, it would still be a push. Was, I, That's why they almost always use a half a point, so there aren't pushes. So if that if that's if we use that as a push, because I, I won seven and seven, you won six, eight, one. That means I would be six, seven, and one. I was, and then I'd be same thing, right? You'd be six. Six well, and you one. counted it as a loss, so you'd be seven, six, and one. That's the one, anyways. You matter. would still have the one game lead. Yeah, so it's the one, anyways. It doesn't even matter. All right, Zachary. So let's change it a little bit. Since uh, you having a really bad year against me this year, let's, let's let's change it a little quick. Let's get the first game. What you got? All right, let me open up the spread. <laughs> ah, first game I will be able to watch with my uncle. Kansas City at Denver, minus three and a half. A team with no offense. Going up to a team with no offense. Excuse me. Kansas City with no defense going to a team with almost no offense. What you got? Now, I'll tell you what. If if the Chiefs are playing better, I would say this is a more more dangerous game for the Chiefs because, you know, Denver is weird, dude. Denver is a a tough place to play at no matter what. But KC needs this game so bad, losing the last two weeks. That I want to take the Chiefs to cover this game just because. If if the Chiefs were five and zero or six and zero, I mean five and one, I would say KC maybe uh, could could probably you know cause number one it's probably bigger than this maybe probably at five six points and I'd probably take Denver. But because the Chiefs need this game badly, I'm going to take the Chiefs to win this game and cover because they need this game badly. Desperation matters here. I totally agree. And I was going with Kansas City to cover before I let you speak. So I feel really good about this pick. <laughs> so, wait, wait, Maybe so, I'll finally win a Kansas City wait, game. Wait, so we're, we're still doing this? We're still doing the KC, what I do, you, you, whatever you do, I, I do, you do? Until I win a Kansas City game, yes. 
Take but hey, I had it picked before you you even spoke, so I'm just saying. No, let's go. Let's go. Confident this week. Okay, go ahead. Next one. Next game, your Giants playing the surging Arizona Cardinals, a team that can score and loves to go deep against a team with no DB. Who you taking? Well, the, the Giants are minus three here, over one and four nine and a half. Uh, dude, if Arizona wins this week, that they're at five hundred. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Crazy. You know, Kyle Murray's having is, is actually having a quiet, really good year, quietly. Oh yeah, he, he he hasn't accounted for many passing touchdowns, but he's put up over sixteen yard, sixteen hundred yards passing. I'm going to take the over this game at four nine and a half. I see a lot of scoring here. Two bad defenses here too, especially. So I'm doing the same with the over. Oh, wow. I would not put it out out of the realm of possibility. Well, I believe New York will win this game and stay within one game of the lead in the NFC East. Who would have thought that? That's all you can ask for. If, you, if you're going to Week 8 and you're within the game of the division lead, that's more you can ask for as a Giants fan right now. And I'm, I'll be, I'm happy with that. All right, next one. The Indianapolis Colts at home against Houston. Colts are favored by one, and the over is 48. Hmm. Dangerous game here, letdown game here for the, for the uh, Texans who had a big win in Kansas City. That that that's just what thing that scares me. Um, and because of that, I'm gonna take the over 48. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to pick Houston either because Houston will let you down. Indy had a week off last week, I believe. Yes, they did. Um, and they're playing a good ball themselves too. So uh, the safe bet's the over 48. Again, we're we're in, in agreement so far. This is not good. I cannot make up ground. I figure the Colts coming off the bye, they'll they'll be ready to play. They'll be able to put up points. And Houston's, I just love Deshaun Watson. MVP so candidate, by the way. Oh, absolutely. I, I would put him on the second tier right now. Yeah, me too, me too. I'm, I have Russell Wilson 1, McCaffrey 2, and then tier 2 begins now with Deshaun I, Mahomes is dropping a bit now because he's had a rough couple weeks. Wow. So, tier one is two players. Tier two is maybe one or two. So, see, I would keep Mahomes in tier tier one just because of how bad their defense is. But he, hasn't, he hasn't played well himself the last couple weeks, though. To be fair, so he hasn't played well. What do you mean? Has he had a game under three hundred yards passing yet? Well, I mean. I, the so one game he doesn't let, throw let, three let, touchdowns let ref- is, is when he's missing all his wide receivers. Let me rephrase that. He's he's played well, but I'm saying I, I guess because he's been playing, he's played so astronomically great the last like 22 games that him playing average to us, you know, him playing really really good is average to us now. I guess so. You you, you got a point there. I will I, I will say this: though. Russell Wilson is number one in my in my book. In McCaffrey number two. Oh, one A, one B. I don't give a shit. You, 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 you give either one, and I'll be okay with that. All right, next game here. Um, here we go. The Buffalo Bills at home against Miami Dolphins. The Bills. <laughs> When's the last time the Bills had a spread this high? Was Jim Kelly quarterback? Probably so. Bills are seventeen point favorites at home against the Dolphins. The over under is forty. Zach, what you got here? I was torn between this game. I didn't know whether or not to take the Bills or take the under because I'm smelling a shutout. Wow. So I'm just going to take the under. I'm going to say the Bills win 35 to nothing. Wow. I'm taking Dolphins yes. on, Dolphin on the point here. I had a feeling you would, but I'd love the under in this game. The only reason why is because... Fitzpatrick's back at quarterback, and I think at least he can somewhat keep it. And I'm, I, I use this term loosely, relatively competitive, somewhat. Eh, I don't know. It'll be a, it'll, Bills win this game pretty easily. I'm just saying that I can see a last minute backdoor touchdown. Bills win. I don't know, twenty seven to. 
13 or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Where it looks actually yeah, no. he was. You know, you know what I'm saying? That kind of shit. Maybe with Fitzpatrick, they could score a field goal and it'd be like 20 to 7, 20 to 3. And a yeah, first. that's what I'm saying. I, I just, in my heart of hearts, believe it's going to be like 35 nothing. But even if the Dolphins were able to keep it from being, you know, right, a 17 point spread, right, it's still going to stay under under 40, in my opinion. The under, you know, it's funny. Now you say that the under might be the best bet here. Also, I'm gonna stick with my bet though, because it's something different to you and I. Cause we've been on the same page all, so far, first three games. <laughs> so let's see if, 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 who wins out in this one. Okay, we have the Oakland Raiders heading to Green Bay to face the Packers. The Packers are six point favorites. The over under on this game is forty six and a half. A lot of respect for the in my opinion here, this spread. A lot of respect for the Raiders here, apparently, according to Vegas. What do you think? They haven't looked terrible on offense though. That that's the one issue. So I I, I was halfway tempted to take the point. After how bad Green Bay actually looked against Detroit, which by the way <laughs> Go ahead. Oh crap, <laughs> they need to be fired. I never saw one ref be so bad at his job as the guy who called multiple hands to the face on one player. That was an embarrassment. I, 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 it's very possible he could be fired. Um, I think Green Bay. I think Green to cover this game. I think Green Bay wants to wants to wipe off the stink off. I, I think the Packers know they got away with with one on, on Monday night. Okay. I think they want to kind of re you know reassert their dom. I don't want to say dominance, but reassert their you know. I want records. I'm taking the Packers to, to cover the spread. You t- taking the Raiders? No, I'm taking the over. Oh, I want to okay. take the Raiders, but I don't have the guts, so I'll just take the over in the game. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I, actually, I actually skipped this one here. This is a big game, actually. Minnesota Vikings heading to Detroit to face the Lions, we just spoke about a while ago. The, the Vikings are one-point favorites. The over-under is 45 points. This game's at 1 o'clock. Kirk Cousins should be fine in this game. I'm taking the under, though, in this game, 45. Wow. Because you made the point that I always stress, it's a one o'clock game where nobody other than in Minnesota and Michigan will be watching. Give me Minnesota. Give me minus one. I'm pretty sure Cousins can cover. You know what's really fucked up, though, for the for Kirk Cousins, though, really, honestly? Given the team he, ha- he plays with right now, he doesn't even have to be great. Just be good, and you're good enough. Just be good. Absolutely. It's what screwed me on believing Case Keenum could be an NFL quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's in Washington. So. <laughs> All right. Next game here, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Cincinnati to face the winless Bengals. The Jaguars are three-point favorites. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. Jaguars are one of the best two and four teams in the league. I will say that. Very competitive. I have one question because you seem to be up to date with injuries. Will AJ Green play this weekend? I haven't heard anything, so right now my answer is no. Then I'll take Jacksonville to cover. Okay, I'm taking the over in this game. The Bengals. I wanted to do it. Forty-three and a half. The Bengals. Pretty low under. Yeah, the Bengals. Every second game, they they play over their heads. In position to win a game and then they lose it. They're not. They're not. Hor- they're not a horrific 0 6 team. In other words, they're not like every week they're losing by fucking 20 plus points. They're actually competitive in half their games. It's just that they can't get over the hump, and they've, they've had a really, really tough schedule. To be honest with you too. So, um, uh, I'll take the over here. I think Bengals have a chance with this game though. We'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, the LA Rams, who are now three and three, lost three in a row, heading to Atlanta to face the Falcons, who are one and five, and on the bottom. On my bottom five this week, my power rankings, the Rams are three-point favorites. The over-under is 54. The Rams made a big trade last night. They got Jalen Ramsey. Your thoughts on that? Two first-rounders for him. I don't think he was worth it. But the fact that the odds are they'll be in the 20s, 
maybe it maybe it actually is worth worth that for a Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. They desperately need it. They need something on defense because right now nothing's clicking on on that team. So they need his passion more than anything. Mm-hmm. So you got you got the Rams? No, I'm gonna do something crazy. And I'm going to take the under in the game, under 54. Hmm. I feel it's a little bit high. You know, I pick on Rams fans. Uh, I pick on Falcons fans quite often, especially some of the, some of my all oh, my fellow media folks who are uh, Falcon fans. Hello, Danny Thompson, by the way, for the record. Um, but I keep picking them every week, <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it over time. I mean, they're one in five, but they have no notable injuries to speak of. At some point, they got to win a game, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're way better than the record. So you I'm, would I'm t- think, but is it just coaching that's the problem? Or is there no heart on that team? Zach, i got to be honest with you. This team has not looked the same since Super Bowl three years ago. Now, sure, to be the playoffs the year after no. that. But that, that, ever since that Super Bowl loss, they've this progressively gotten worse. But I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm taking the Falcons a, a plus three here. I'm going to take Falcons one more time. I'm probably crazy to do this, but if, you, if you're going to beat the Rams, now it's time to do it. You know, even with even with Jalen Ramsey in the roster. Okay. Four o'clock. Oh, the last one o'clock game here. The San Francisco 49ers heading to Washington. Your boys against the Redskins. We got the first one last week is Miami. Uh, Niners are ten point favorites. The over under is forty one and a half. Zachary, I'm going to shock you here. I'm taking the I'm taking the the skins here on the points. I was halfway tempted because it is a one o'clock game and mm-hmm. they're coming all the way from the West Coast. Also let down too. That's on factors here. Didn't play. Yeah. I I just can't do it. I <laughs> honestly can't. The okay. Redskins are just so god awful. Oh god. <laughs> When you could only score 17 points against the Dolphins' defense. I'm scared they could be shut out unless they go for a garbage field goal at the end. Mm-hmm. So give me San Fran minus the points. Wow, okay. Here you go, four o'clock games. you got three of them this week. Uh, the L.A. Chargers, the disappointing Chargers heading to Tennessee to face the Titans. The Chargers are the, – the, actually, actually, the Titans are two-point favorites. The over owners is 40. Uh, Marcus Mariota benched in favor of, of uh, Ryan Tannehill. The Chargers are two and four and fading. Um, Zachary, what'd you do with this one? I'm going to take the Chargers. I had been let down all season by the Chargers, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get let down, and I'm going to take the Chargers. It's funny because I, I this is typically a spot where the Tennessee Titans typically win. Whenever they they you know kind of back against the wall kind of situation they'll they'll steal a game here. However, I am not trusting that to happen this week. I'm going to take the over in this game at forty. Ooh. Yeah, I was tempted to still go with the under because Tennessee is a lock for unders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but I got you got ten million. See what happens. To the quarterback, we'll see. And I don't think it really matters mm. at this point. The way in which the game, the offensive game plan is for that team. I don't think it really matters who's at quarterback. Right. So okay. that's why I'm taking the Chargers. This is a pretty big game here. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens heading to Seattle to face the Seahawks. The Seahawks right now are three and a half point favorites. The over under is fifteen and a half. Seahawks five and one. They don't feel like they, they don't feel like a, uh, they, they don't feel like a good five one team. I think their five one record is because the quarterback Russell Wilson is that great and he's the MVP in my opinion. Again, I think he's on that first tier of MVP. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could actually give him the MVP, but they are definitely five and one because of him and nothing else. Right. I took Seattle to points here. I took Seattle to cover this game. I'm scary though. I'm gonna take the under in the game. That's not I bad. I feel like actually. it'll be a little overwhelming. For, for Lamar Jackson in Seattle. And so I'm going to take the under. 
That half point's tricky. I, I will say that, but I'm going to go ahead and, and put some faith in Russell Wilson to get the job done again one week. Uh, we'll see what happens there. All right. We have the New Orleans Saints heading to Chicago to face the Bears. The New Orleans Saints, uh, 5-1. Impressive without Drew Brees, especially. Uh, the Bears right now are three-point favorites. The over-under is 3.5. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud and very happy for Teddy Bridgewater. What a game last week. Oh, Imagine, imagine, imagine the game. That's a few weeks, actually, to be honest. Well, while, well. while I was rooting to see Tyson Hill more mm-hmm. at quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater does what he does. He just doesn't make mistakes to cost you a game. Mm-hmm. And that is so important in the NFL. That D is really good, man. That Saints D is, D is really good. Wow. Shocking. Oh, yeah. And that's the reason why I am taking the under in the game at 38 and a half. As am I. Because, number one, you have the Saints defense and all that. And number two is who's the Bears quarterback this week? Trubisky's out again, right? So, I imagine. Slow. I don't think it really matters. Right, exactly. Their offense as well. Right. So, under is good there. Um, all right. The big Sunday night game, of course. The Philadelphia Eagles, 3-3, three and three, heading to Dallas to face the Cowboys, who are also 3-3 three and three, have lost three straight games. The Cowboys are three-point favorites. The over-under is 48 and a half. Uh, the Cowboys, that made me look terrible the last three weeks. My God. <laughs> Number two in the power rankings? What was I thinking? <laughs> well, yeah, that, having them that high made no sense. Yeah. When uh, they had lost two games beforehand, the quality opponents, they proved. They were not the number two team. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I need to the Jets of that. <laughs> need one of those bad teams. Well, that threw me one. off. I really expected, you know, the one, their backup, that third stringer who got cut to be the starter. I didn't realize that Sam Darnold was coming back for the game. Mm-hmm. But they still shouldn't have lost that game. I agree with you 100%. Um, I, I, I think... Dallas needs this game more, needs this game more than Philadelphia. I think Philly can still lose this game and still feel like, okay, we can still take care of business because they've done this the last couple of years where, like, they start slow and then they've kind of pick up the pace. Uh, like, 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 I mean, last year did that, for example. They started slow and then um, in the, year, but the last quarter of the yeah. year they got in the playoffs. They want a playoff game. Da- I think Dallas needs this game badly. However, I'm taking the Eagles to win this game outright. Absolutely, I'm there with you. I actually believe Philly sees this as as the opportunity to put a nail in the coffin of the of the Cowboys' season. And you know, Eagles, the Eagles' biggest weakness right now is the secondary. Unfortunately, Amari Cooper is out, probably out for this game, probably out for multiple games, most likely. So that's a bad sign. Yeah, he's got moment. the foot and thigh issue now. Yeah, that's, so. that's that's a problem there. So give me Philadelphia with this game out, when, Randy. Yeah. All right. And finally, the Monday night game here, we have the New England Patriots heading to New York to face the Jets. The Patriots are nine and a half point favorites. The over under is forty two and a half. Zachary, I, I, I am tempted to take the Jets on the points here, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust Brady and the guys to cover the spread. Well, I'm gonna shock you. And it's probably because I'm getting conned from last week. But I'm gonna take the Jets and the points at oh, home. Oh wow, okay. Another nine and nine. a half at home on a Monday night. I feel like I haven't seen any great offense from from the Patriots in, in a while now. That's true. That's true. Even last week against the Giants, the Giants were competitive in that game. That game was all defense. Really, to be honest with you, that score that score uh, is yeah. that score is very deceptive. So, but maybe this is the week they get get together. I mean, that's the thing. You know, at some point, you know. They have had they're gonna have what eleven days off prior to this. You know, you know they play on Thursday last week. They don't play till Monday night. Uh-huh. That's a pretty big. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, Bill Belichick. You know, anybody who knows to prepare for these games and shake things off is that guy. So I don't know. No, I, I for the simple heart that I believe the Jets want want to play with heart, especially at home against the Patriots. Nine and a half was just too much for me. Right. 
All right, and the buys this week, of course, the Carolina Panthers, Cleveland Browns, Pitcher Steelers, the Tampa Buccaneers. Anybody, anybody else in the, in the buys? I think that's it. Anyway. Yeah, so the it, Red, I believe the Redskins are on a buy. Well, they're playing with San Francisco. That's a buy. You'll lose. <laughs> exactly. I don't imagine them showing up to the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. All right, before you go, uh, as we do every week on the show, uh, our FSU Minute, uh, again, no surprise last week is Clemson. Got their asses kicked. Um, Clemson even covered, I believe, right? Barely. Oh, covered. yeah. They Barely covered. covered. By they point. managed to pull their quarterback in the third quarter. They're yeah. like, this is embarrassing. We're beating them 42 to nothing. Let's just pull the quarterback. They barely covered, though, because the, the spread was 27 points. And I think they won by 28, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Florida State must have scored another touchdown at the very end that, let me, let me that make sure. I missed. Yeah, the final score was 45-14. Yeah, that's, that covers it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I thought it was bigger than that, so see. Yeah. I mean, I mean, no surprise there. We, we knew that was coming, so there's no big deal. Um, this week they play um, the Wake Forest, um, and we are one-half point dogs in this game. Over 167, though. Uh, I don't know. How do you feel about this game? Uh, I'll take Wake Forest minus seven. They're having a good year. They're five and one. Minus yeah. seven. They're minus one. Yeah, and like I said, I'll take Wake, Wake Forest minus seven. Wow. The disrespect yeah. by Zach. <laughs> the degenerate. It's not disrespect. And we just had another, uh, commit, decommit. Ooh, so really? we don't. I don't even believe we have a four-star recruit left on the team. Now you, you've been saying that you know that there's no way they'll fire Taggart because of the money situation. But if this school keeps getting more decommits, do you think they have the the school has to start considering that? No, this is what certain schools do in certain certain individuals. They hate admitting they're wrong. They hate to admit that they screwed up on another hire and so they refuse to do do something to make a change. Now I'm not gonna so say unless and, Willie mm-hmm. but unless Willie Taggart decides he wants to leave, I can't imagine they fire him. Yeah. Now I'm not gonna sit here and blame Taggart for all the issues here because the goals that had already started falling apart with Jimbo before he left last year or two. So this is not this only Taggart here to be safe. This has been a trend going for at least three to four years now. I will say that. But Jimbo, they were starting to fall yeah. apart anyway. So, but Jimbo got out of it. Jimbo could escape while he could. So, anyway, so uh, that's it for the week. Uh, good luck for you this week. Finally, it's first win. We'll see what happens. We'll get along. So, you still got another, uh, what, 12 weeks left of the year? Oh, no. And I'll let, make let, my let, comeback. Let, I'm a late season guy. Yeah, you, last year you, you almost pulled out last year, so it can happen. So, Zach, thank you as always. Oh, thank you. All right, buddy, be good.